from my perspective, Glasgow has now been a creative city for three years, so it's still actually very early days for us. And the interesting part of our work is actually working out how to become sustainable, and in particular how to create a database, a state where we know sufficient about the city really to be able to respond to what it requires. And that sounds like a simple thing, but it's really not a simple thing. Very, very few cities really know what lies within their boundaries. And a lot of our work right now is about making sure that we can hold in our hands the most detailed and complicated and valuable map of the activity in the city so that we can then plan for the next 10 years and work out how we can talk to government, to artists, to musicians, to the partners in the Creative City Network, really to talk from a position of knowledge, not just aspiration, because aspiration is vital, but without knowledge, aspiration is a bubble. Music cities within the creative network are already very active and very discussive. We, we meet quite regularly, we know each other, and there is a chance now to start doing things, and we already are working on UNESCO Music Days as a possibility to share the talent within each of the cities. Uh, that's the first step. But yes, there's discussion all the time. In Glasgow there is a very strong awareness of the importance of culture generally, not just music, but culture generally as a vital aspect to our tourism industry. We are home to one of Scotland's biggest festivals, Celtic Connections, uh, and we know that a very, very large number of the people who come to Scotland come to Glasgow to see the famous museums, the architecture of Charles Rennie Mackintosh, as well as to experience some of the traditional music or the great orchestras. All of those things contribute to a huge value. But additionally, when the city is bidding for major conferences, major congresses, having a creative city right there is a huge asset. It makes the destination more attractive for all kinds of people. In general, I find that the politicians are very aware of the benefits already. I think that often they are presented with the economic arguments, which are very strong. Obviously, if you have a creative city, more companies want to come and live and work in your city. That's good. But what I personally would say, and with my perspective from UNESCO City of Music, would be to say, go to your health department, go to your education department, go to your social welfare department, go to the department that looks after immigrant communities, and find out how they could use music to make a difference to all of the people that they deal with and ask them to be imaginative and then if they have no ideas go to the cities where they have used music in hospitals where they have used music for communities who have language problems see how music has been used to bring old people together so that they are not isolated and alone um, see how music has been used to improve health in many different circuits and very fast you will realize that there is no aspect of city management and delivery that cannot benefit from engagement with culture.